A student cries and trembles as the class is dismissed. Hyung No, a disabled student, gasps for air and moves his wheelchair to take a break. However, someone calls him and kicks him back inside the room. Some students claiming to be his friends come. The school president, Joom Su, tells them to keep it down. Even though Hyung No needs to go to the toilet, they take him somewhere. Joom Su only watches them as they leave. Soon after, one of the bullies, Gu Hyung, plays with Hyung No's wheelchair. The leader of the group, Gang Se, who is smoking, mentions how good kids must follow the rules. He asks Hyung No, and he agrees. He continues to mention how garbage should be thrown properly as he throws things at Hyung No. Gu Hyung trips the wheelchair on a rock and falls. His arm gets grazed and his shoes get dirty. He glares at Hyung No and blames him for what happened. He kicks Hyung No many times until the school bell rings. They leave Hyung No alone as Gu Hyung asks for damage compensation. Hyung No tries to get up as he tries to console himself. A student who arrives late for school notices Hyung No and smiles. He asks Hyung No if he needs help. However, Hyung No respectfully refuses and gets back in his wheelchair on his own. Hyung No claims he is fine and steers away while the other student watches him leave. The student is actually a transfer student. The teacher wonders where Hyung No is, and everyone laughs as one classmate claims he is in the toilet. Jim Su is silent as ever. The transfer student is introduced as Nam Su. Nam Su is assigned to the empty seat at the back. The bully from before greets him, but Nam Su ignores him. As the class proceeds, Nam Su notices the empty seat with open notes. The door opens, and the teacher starts getting mad at the tardy student. Hyung No apologizes, and the teacher starts scolding him while threatening his position as the top student. Hyung No quietly goes back to his seat, and the class continues. During break time, Nam Su talks to Hyung No, who suddenly gets startled. Nam Su tries to help him pick up his pen, but Hyung No refuses and does it on his own. However, Nam Su can see that Hyung No is having a hard time. The bell rings again, and Nam Su quietly goes back to his seat. His seatmate warns him not to get close to Hyung No, or else he will become an outcast. Nam Su ignores his seatmate, looks at Hyung No, and falls asleep. A loud shout later wakes him up, and he discovers Gu Hyung threatening to blind Hyung No. Nam Su is startled to see Hyung No tremble in fear. Gu Hyung laughs as he watches Hyung No squirm. He leaves after asking the disabled boy for the compensation he had requested earlier. While talking, he accidentally bumps into the door's edge and blames Hyung No once again. Just then, a man appears to fetch Hyung No for cram school, and Nam Su watches them leave the room. That night, Hyung No has a meal with his family. His father asks how school was, and Hyung No shares that they are constructing another wheelchair lift in his school. Hyung No cheerfully mentions that his class has a new transfer student. His father wonders if his argument with another classmate has been resolved. Hyung No trembles and drops his chopstick. Their maid tries to help, but Hyung No refuses. The adults watch as Hyung No tries hard to pick up his chopstick. Suddenly, Hyung No excuses himself to study. His mother worries about how stubborn Hyung No is and his reluctance to rely on others. Hyung No returns to his room and turns off the lights. He silently goes to bed, and while covered in a blanket, keeps telling himself that he is all right. The next morning, the leader of the bullies, Gang Se, greets Hyung No and asks him to play a game. They draw circles on a surface and the leader asks who will go first. Hyung No trembles as they are about to start playing the human dart game. The leader starts recording and tells them to go. Gu Hyang goes first, and poor Hyang No almost gets hit by a ballpoint pen. Gu Hyang keeps on throwing until he angrily hits one for a bullseye. The pen with blood falls, and Hyang No trembles in pain. Jang Su also starts throwing pens, and Hyang No can only put up with the pain. The group leaves and talks about Nam Su, who is a huge antisocial kid. They plan to teach Nam Su a lesson. Class starts, but Nam Su notices that Hyang No is missing. Hyang No is struggling to go back to this classroom. He reaches the stairs and uses the lift. The teacher starts her discussion, but the lift is moving slowly. Even a latecomer passes by Hyung No. The teacher later notices the door open and tells the apologetic Hyung No to take a seat. Nam Su keeps on staring at Hyung No until the bell rings for recess. Nam Su gets up and goes to buy bread. He returns to the classroom and throws the bread at his seatmate. He asks what Hyung No normally likes. The seatmate calls Nam Su strange. Nam Su claims he just wants to be friends with Hyung No. The seatmate reminds Nam Su about the group of bullies led by Gang Se. Knowing that Hyung No always studies, the seatmate suggests books. Nam Su immediately talks to Hyung No and asks him about the exam scope because he just recently transferred. They suddenly talk about art class lessons. 
but Junsu intervenes and reminds them that the teacher already outlined it. Namsu continues asking for more, and Junsu gets up. He menacingly asks what Kanho is up to. He tells Namsu to ask him instead. He comments on how organized a top student's notes are. Namsu asks Hyungho for the next part, and Junsu intervenes again. However, Namsu makes it clear that he was asking Hyungho, not him. Junsu's hand flinches, and he laughs it off. He offers to be of help next time. A teacher calls for Junsu. Junsu goes to the faculty office, and the teacher mentions how worried his parents are for them to send gifts. The boy who can't get first place just smiles and leaves the office while cursing at someone. Class ends, and Junsu glares at Kyungho before leaving. Kyungho's driver is running late. Namsu prepares to leave. Kyungho tells him they will see each other again tomorrow. Namsu smiles, knowing that they are getting closer. Kyungho's driver arrives, and Namsu becomes cheerful. That night, Hyungho cleans up the mess and wounds on his back. He goes to sleep as usual and wakes up when the alarm rings. He prepares for school as usual and tells himself in the mirror that he will be alright. His driver later drops him off on a sidewalk near the school and worries about how Hyungho will go on his own. Hyungho goes alone and gets stuck on a broken pavement. He keeps trying to get out of it until a girl pushes him forward. A cute junior greets him cheerfully. The girl offers help. Nansu smiles as he sees Hyungho but frowns after seeing the girl. Hyungho refuses the girl's help and claims that his friend Nansu will help him instead. The girl leaves and Nansu tries to push the wheelchair, but Kano tells him that he can go on his own. Nansu can only watch Hyungho. On the way to school, Gang Se sighs because he finds things boring now. Gu Hyung starts laughing and claims he has new entertainment while holding a medicine container. Classes proceed as usual. Nansu notices how cheerful Hanno is, who is actually thinking about the cute female junior. Everyone inside the classroom is on edge. The teacher ends the class, and everyone dashes out for lunch. Nansu is still writing notes until his pen's ink bleeds out. Jono eats his lunch silently, and Nansu passes by him. He wants to chat with Hanno, so he goes to wash his hands first. The bullies enter the classroom, and utensils clang on the floor. Nansu returns, and Hanno is missing. In the cafeteria, Gu Hyung calls for other students to bet. He presents something that he claims can cure broken legs. Hyungho tries to decline because it is unprescribed by his doctor, but Gu Hyung forces the pills into Hyungho's mouth. Gang Se bets that Hyungho will hold it in. Hyungho gasps for air as the rest of the medicine falls to the ground. Gu Hyung starts the bet if the miracle drug he brought can heal Hyungho. What a crazy kid. Hyungho starts hyperventilating. Nansu overhears from others how the bullies fed Hyungho medicine for diarrhea. Everyone chatters and laughs while Hyungho is suffering. A sound is heard, and everyone feels disgusted. Gang Se claps and claims that Hyungho held it in. Hyungho trembles out of embarrassment. The others try to leave, but Jang Su tells them to clean Hyungho up. They later go to the washroom and Gu Hyung and Seidia argue about who will clean Hyungho. They use a hose to clean Hyungho together. Hyungho can only shiver. The door opens, and the bullies see Namsu. Namsu ignores them and washes his hands. Seidi gets mad that he is being ignored and confronts Namsu. Namsu slaps Seidi's face, strong enough to make the bully bleed. Namsu menacingly looks down on Seidi. Gu Hyung starts claiming that he knows martial arts and runs forward. However, he slips and falls down into the filthy water. Namsu just looks at him freaking out. The two bullies now look pathetic. Namsu notices that the dirty water has reached his shoe. Gu Hyung curses at Namsu. Namsu grabs Gu Hyung's head and slams him on the floor. He uses Gu Hyung as a rug to clean the soles of his shoes. He tries to offer help to Kyungho, but the latter refuses. Seeing Hyungho sweat, Namsu insists on helping, but Hyungho doesn't really depend on others. Namsu insists on helping again, and Hyungho shouts from the top of his lungs that he is fine. Namsu gets flustered and complies. Gu Hyun gets back up and tries to attack them with a mop. Namsu grabs the mop, and Gu Hyun gets surprised. He releases the mop and falls silent as Namsu approaches him. He quickly runs outside while claiming that he lost his phone. Namsu hesitates to leave Hyun alone. Still, he leaves and starts writing some notes in his notebook. He just scribbles there silently until he bends his pen. He slams his pen, closes his notebook, and goes to sleep. Later, Gang Se hears the news from Gu Hyun and Se Yi. They tattle on how Namsu beat them up. Gang Se puts down his food and asks for Namsu's name and whereabouts. Students outside the classroom are complaining that Gang Se is ordering them around. 
Jumsu comes and tells Gangsei Namsu's name. The two both sit down for a conversation. Jumsu tells Gangsei not to touch Namsu. Gangsei agrees, and Gu Hyun gets flustered that he can't get his revenge. Jumsu stands and claims that he likes the quiet atmosphere. Gu Hyun gets pissed off that Gangsei is complying with Jumsu's words. Gangsei is actually pissed off and drops his cup noodles. He calls the students outside and tells them to clean the mess. Later, Jumsu walks past the sleeping Namsu. Meanwhile, the maid at Hyungo's house discovers his filthy uniform. Hyungo's mother wonders what is wrong and gets surprised to see the uniform. Hyungo's father, who is actually a congressman, receives the call. He tells his wife that Hyungo is at an age to solve things on his own. His wife is worried, and he tells her to discuss it at home instead. The police officer that he is meeting tries to give him some ginseng, but Hyungo's father declines it. It is obviously a bribe, but the police officer denies it. Hyungo, on the other hand, continues to assure himself that he is okay. The next day, Namsu walks to school and notices Hyungo, but he can't greet him properly. During the homeroom period, the teacher calls the attention of Gu Hyung and Hyungo. Namsu gets worried. In the counseling room, the teacher scolds Gu Hyung for his pranks. She tells Gu Hyung to kneel and apologize. Gu Hyung feels frustrated, but he complies. The teacher continues to scold Hyungo for acting weak and invulnerable. Hyungo raises his arm as punishment and continues to receive more scolding compared to Gu Hyung. What is wrong with this school? The teacher sighs and tells the two to shake hands. Gu Hyung sarcastically apologizes and glares at Hyungo. The teacher lets Hyungo leave first and continues scolding Gu Hyung. Nansu acts fidgety and worried. He notices Hyungo coming out of the counseling room. Hyungo tries to move his wheelchair, but his sweaty hands fail him. Nansu worries and checks on him. He asks what happened and if he can do anything to help. Nansu smiles brightly as Hyungo asks for his help. Namsu happily pushes Hyungo's wheelchair. A female suddenly becomes interested in Namsu. But So Yin, the junior who helped Hyungo before, drags her away. Meanwhile, with weakened knees, Gu Hyung swears to get his revenge on Hyungo. He later cries and apologizes for his dirty shoes. The others ignore him, while Se Yi calls him mental. Jang Su finishes his food and gets up to train. Gang Se wonders if Jang Su can still participate in the tournament since he smashed someone's face. Jang Su claims things have worked out for him. Gu Hyung continues shouting for revenge. There is really something wrong with these kids. Gu Hyung later sneaks into the classroom while the others are outside for PE class. He pulls out a screwdriver and opens all the lockers. Meanwhile, the others are running laps on the school grounds. They complain about how Hyungo is always exempted from PE class. The teacher tells Hyungo not to mind them and notices Nansu acting like Hyungo's bodyguard. Back in the classroom, Gu Hyun rummages through Namsu's bag for money. He finds Nansu's notebook and laughs at the childish cover. He skims through the pages and finds writings related to Kyungno. The bell rings and Gu Hyun hurriedly escapes with Namsu's money. Meanwhile, students are still complaining about Kyungno being exempted from PE class. Nansu tells Kyungno to call him if he needs help. The female student from before, Hyu Yang, checks on Namsu again and claims him to be her honey. After satisfying her eyes, Hyu Yang returns to So Yin and tells her about Namsu. So Yin can't believe her friend is acting like a stalker. Hyu Yang mentions how Namsu is trying to get close to Kyung Ho and thinks Namsu has ulterior motives. So Yin claims that not everyone is the same as her. She also wonders why Hyu Yang is following her into the student council room. Hyu Yang claims there is a cute male senior in the council. A teacher starts his class but gets interrupted. Jumsu asks if he can attend his student council meeting now. The teacher allows him to leave, and everyone starts booing. He continues the class after scolding the others. Hyungo tries to pay attention, but he is distracted by Namsu. He feels bad for being harsh on Namsu, who is only trying to help him. He plans to apologize. Just then, he notices that Namsu is staring at him. They both awkwardly smile at each other. In the student council room, Hyu Yang starts daydreaming about having Nam Su as her lover. Jim Su arrives, and Hyu Yang suddenly acts properly. Jim Su starts talking about their meeting's agenda, but Hyu Yang interrupts him. She wonders if Jim Su is in the same class as the disabled student. Jim Su confirms that they are classmates. Hyu Yang then asks if he knows the brown haired student and finds it awful that he is friends with a disabled person. She thinks Nam Su smells awful for being friends with a disabled person. She also finds Kyungno weird for always blushing when greeting So Yun. 
Jiumsu starts scolding her for her prejudice against disabled people and hopes she won't talk the same way again. The meeting ends, and Jiumsu smirks as he finds out that a disabled person has the courage to like someone. He continues to put up a poker face in front of the teachers. He guesses that one thing makes Hyungo's life bearable. Another day comes, and Gu Hyung is still complaining about how he needs to bear his grudge against Nam Su and Hyungo. Gu Hyung claims that they have nothing to lose if they gang up on them. Sei gets mad at Gu Hyung and tells him to stop it already. They continue arguing in front of Gang Se. Gang Se cracks his candy and gets up. He silently passes by them and leaves. In the classroom, Hyung Mo is looking for the right chance to apologize to Nam Su. Hyung Mo calls him, and Nam Su wonders what is wrong. As Hyung Mo tries to say something, the door crashes open. Gang Se appears and tells everyone to get out. Everyone gets confused, and Gang Se apologizes because he forgot it was not his class. He looks at Nam Su and Hyung Mo and approaches them. Gang Se kicks Hyung Mo, and he falls to the floor. Gang Se starts taking pictures of the pitiful Hyung Mo while Nam Su just stares at them. Nam Su tries to help Hyung Mo, but Gang Se starts checking Nam Su out. He claims that a certain someone told him not to touch Nam Su yet. Gang Se asks Nam Su to remain quiet and behave well. Hyung Mo can only watch from the floor. Gang Se walks out, and Nam Su checks on Hyung Mo. Hyung Mo refuses Nam Su's help, and Nam Su gets sad. Jim Su starts cussing out Gang Se in his mind. First period class ends, and Nam Su asks what Hyung Mo needed from him a while ago. However, Hyung Mo tells Nam Su not to worry anymore. Hyung Mo doesn't want Nam Su to be involved in his bullying matters. For some reason, Gu Hyung is sneaking around them. Nam Su's seatmate starts scolding him for getting close to Hyung Mo, but Nam Su goes to sleep instead. Classes end for the day, and Gang Se invites Gu Hyung and Sei for a drink to celebrate. They later arrive at the club. The guard starts getting mad at them because they are high schoolers. Just then, another man appears to greet Gang Se. The man brings Gang Se and the others inside. A girl notices them and immediately clings to Gang Se. Gang Se reminds her that he is still in his uniform. The group stays in a room until Gang Se's father appears. They are given a lot of food. Gang Se then asks Gu Hyung about Jang Su. Apparently, Jang Su is training hard for his tournament. Seeing that Gang Se is in a good mood, Gu Hyung wonders if there is good news. Just then, they hear some crashing sounds, and a guard reports that there is a crackdown on the club. The chief inspector comes inside the room. Gang Se's father tries to bribe him, but the chief inspector claims he can't help out this time. The top brass ordered him to arrest him, though he feels bad doing it in front of Gang Se. The next day, Gang Se attends classes blankly, and Gu Hyung can see how Gang Se looks bad. Gang Se starts typing a message. He hesitates, but he sends the message in the end. Meanwhile, Joom Su is teaching someone math. He receives a message and slowly smiles while reading it. After classes end, Gang Se meets up with Joom Su. Gang Se smiles and asks for a favor. He mentions how his father's place got cracked down. He wonders if Joom Su can put in a good word with his father. Joom Su claims that he will try talking to his father. In return, Joom Su expects that Gang Se and his friends won't cause any trouble before the term ends. He also asks to leave Nam Su and Hyung Mo alone for a while. He claims he has a plan in mind, and it is better to let the two of them become friends. Gang Seo agrees with a smile but feels bad later after Joom Su leaves. That night, Gang Se's father gets released and gets mad at the police. His men also come with food, but he hits them instead. He sees Gang Se, and they go to the car together. He tells Gang Se that money solves everything in this world. Morning comes, and Hyung Mo tries to go out to school. His wheelchair makes a weird creaking sound, and Hyung Mo makes up a reason in front of his mother. His mother suggests getting a new one right now, but Hyung Mo tells her that it is fine. He later gets into the car, and his driver wonders if there is something wrong. Hyung Mo claims it is nothing, but the driver understands that even a top student gets nervous during exam season. Soon after, Kyung Mo pushes his wheels on the sidewalk. Nam Su sees him and calls out to Kyung Mo. A man argues with someone on the phone while driving his truck. Kyung Mo crosses the pedestrian at a green light, moving his squeaking wheelchair. The driver continues arguing on the phone while moving his truck sideways, shouting without minding the road. Kyung Mo's wheelchair gets broken, and he stops in the middle of the road, falling to the ground. Nam Su sees everything, including the incoming truck. The traffic light is almost changing its light as Hyung Mo tries to move. The traffic light turns red, and Nam Su sprints toward another student. Nam Su pushes the student so hard that the student lands in the middle of the road. 
The angry driver suddenly notices a person in front of him. The truck abruptly stops and dodges the student just in time. The student trembles in fear upon seeing Namsu. Nansu acts as if he just noticed the student and apologizes. He leaves to catch up to Kyungno, leaving the other student shivering in fear. Kyungno notices Namsu and wonders what happened. Namsu claims that the driver was just crazy mad. He asks if Kyungno was fine. Kyungno's driver arrives and picks him up. Namsu watches them leave. Namsu goes to school alone and feels depressed. Hyu Yang sees him and starts flirting with him out of nowhere. Namsu ignores her and continues walking. Hyu Yang feels embarrassed but continues talking to Namsu. She does her best, but Namsu continues to ignore her. She gets mad and wonders where Kyungno is. Namsu stops and asks her about Kyungno. Hyu Yang was just curious because she always sees them together. She then uses this chance to ask if Namsu has a girlfriend. She forces the words out of Namsu. She celebrates after knowing that Namsu is single and continues flirting with him. So Yeon calls out to Hyu Yang, but Hyu Yang signals her not to bother. Soon after, Hyu Yang barges into a classroom. Jum Su wonders what Hyu Yang is doing in their classroom. Hyu Yang then runs towards someone and cutely calls them honey. Gu Hyang knows that no one can resist his charms. Hyu Yang feels disgusted. She actually came for Nam Su and continues to do so each time a class period ends. Gu Hyang is quite frustrated that it is not him. Meanwhile, a repairman arrives at Kyung Ho's house. He notices how the wheelchair got busted up on purpose. Hyungho's mother knows how gentle and meticulous Hyungho is. Just then, she remembers the filthy uniform and realizes something is happening with Hyungho. She calls her husband, and Hyungho's father picks up the call. His assistants can see how stressed the congressman has been lately. Hyungho's mother claims that something is going on with their son. She insists that there is something wrong, even if Hyungho doesn't tell them. Hyungho's father tells his wife that Hyungho is a boy who can solve his own school matters. He knows Hyungho can get through it because he is their son. Later, Hyungho's mother makes a snack, and with worries in her heart, knocks on the door. She tells her son to take it easy for now after the accident. Hyungho tells her not to worry. She asks him if there are things bothering him lately, and Hyungho can tell her anything, anytime. He claims that there have just been small misunderstandings lately in school, and he can handle it on his own. He tells his mother not to worry with a smile. She tells Hyungho to promise her that he will talk if he needs help with something. She leaves the room, and Hyungho can only sigh. On the other hand, Naunsu is scribbling some notes before sleeping. He continues scribbling, and a familiar drawing can be seen. He is drawing Gu Hyung and Seiye, in various situations in the classroom. In this drawing, he wants to be friends with Hyungho and with Hyungho only. He closes his notebook and sleeps on his desk while smiling. Also, his room turns out to be quite a mess. The next day comes and Naunsu is in a good mood. Hyu Young watches him from the sidelines. She surprises Namsu and chases him on the way to school. Namsu arrives at the classroom tired, but his mood changes as he sees Hyungno. He checks on Hyungno, who turns out to be fine. Hyungno tells him that he is quite busy, and Namsu goes to his seat. Hyungno is creating distance between them, so Namsu won't get caught up in anything worse. Meanwhile, Seiye laughs at his classmates for looking like matriarchal dolls. Gu Hyung talks to him and implies that Gang Se is acting weird lately. He also informs Gu Hyung not to bother Nan Su and Hyungno. Gu Hyung feels frustrated to the point that he can't sleep. He feels frustrated because Hyungno just makes him feel taunted. Nan Su appears to follow Hyungno, and Gu Hyung falls silent. He decides not to bother the two for now. He calls Nan Su a retard for having a notebook with an old cartoon character on its cover. He tries to talk about the notebook's contents but the bell rings, prompting them for the PE class. On the other hand, Jang Su is working up a sweat during training. His coach keeps reminding him of his past deeds. Jang Su bit off an opponent's ear and won the fight. His coach forces him to lose weight because he got placed in a different weight class after the incident. He gets a call from the vice principal and leaves. Jang Su gets up feeling hungry and sees that he has no more money. He later meets the chatterbox Gu Hyung and asks if he has any money. Of course, Gu Hyung doesn't have any after spending his fortune on a new set of shoes. Jang Su stands up and leaves, walking away like a zombie. The other students are also on their way to the cafeteria, walking like zombies. As usual, Hyungno eats by himself in his seat while Nam Su is fast asleep. Hyungno silently finishes his food and keeps his utensils. After cleaning his desk, he gets his toiletries and walks, or rather, rolls away. Nam Su is left alone, sleeping. Someone enters the room. 
Hu Yang starts hypnotizing Nam Su in his sleep. Nam Su quickly wakes up, and Hu Yang calls him cute. Nam Su notices Hu Yang missing, and he stands up. He leaves the room dead worried. Hu Yang tries to act cute, but Nam Su asks for Hu Yang instead. Hu Yang wonders if Nam Su is into guys instead. It gets silent for a while, but Nam Su answers that he is not. Hu Yang gets mad that Nam Su is looking for Hu Yang when she is with him. Nam Su wonders if she is friends with Hu Yang. Hu Yang tries to deny it. But after seeing Nam Su's expectant eyes, Hu Yang claims she is friends with Hyung No. Currently, Hyung No is brushing his teeth. Nam Su then asks what Hyung No likes, and Hu Yang gets flustered. Hu Yang then leads Nam Su somewhere using Hyung No as the topic. Hyung No comes out of the washroom and meets Jang Su on the way. Nam Su suddenly hears a familiar creaking sound. He looks behind and can only see three students arguing about Pokemon. Nam Su tries to check out something, but Hu Yang leads him somewhere to eat lunch. Hyung No is brought somewhere by Jang Su. A hungry Jang Su eats junk food beside Hyung No. He continues to munch as he curses someone. Jang Su continues cursing as he devours all the snacks in front of him. He recalls his coach's words and stops eating. He then asks Hyung No why he is living like that. He grabs Hyung No's arms and tells him to at least work out his functioning body parts. Jang Su blames Hyung No's disability as the reason for the bullying. He continues scolding Hyung No for being weak and not working out. Other students are getting worried but hesitate to call a teacher. Jang Su forces Hyung No to eat more to build up his body. Hyung No starts eating. Jang Su wants Hyung No to eat everything. He shouts at Hyung No to eat manly. Hyung No eats gently and chokes. Jang Su grabs a fistful of chips and shoves it into Hyung No's mouth. Everyone can see Hyung No coughing up, even an adult. The janitor tries to get mad at Jang Su, but Jang Su brings Hyung No somewhere again. Jang Su gets mad at Hyung No for embarrassing him and starts stretching something. Meanwhile, Nam Su listens blankly to Hu Yang's talk about her favorite food. Just then, Nam Su stands up and looks outside the window. Hyung No gasps for air as he is left hanging on a bar with his hands tied to it. He is just left alone hanging until So Yin notices him. Hyung No despairs as his junior sees him in an embarrassing position. Nam Su also arrives at the scene where So Yeon is trying to untie Hyung No. She leaves to get scissors, but Nam Su is there to rip apart the thick tapes. Hyung No falls with hands shaking. Nam Su tries to help, but Hyung No tells Nam Su to leave him alone. He tells Nam Su to stop taking an interest in him. Nam Su asks if Hyung No is okay. For the first time, Hyung No voices out that he is not. Hyung No later gets back home and asks his mother if he can take a day off. He claims that he doesn't know what is happening to him and hides his trembling hands. Calmly, his mother agrees for Kyung No to take a day off school. She tells him to rest and study at home until the exam day. His mother asks him to listen to her this time for once. Surprised, Hyung No agrees and excuses himself. On his bed, Hyung No groans in pain. His backside is also wounded. In a flashback, Jang Su acts like a coach. He is basically pouring his frustration on Hyung No. He calls Hyung No a crippled garbage and walks somewhere. He claims Hyung No can only understand after a good beating. He orders Hyung No to do pull-ups, but Hyung No can't do it. Jang Su starts hitting Hyung No as he forces his frustration on the poor cripple. Jang Su claims that he is only helping out Hyung No. In the end, Jang Su calls Hyung No a piece of garbage and leaves Hyung No panting in pain. Hyung No's world shatters after So Yin discovers his pathetic sight. He becomes blank while So Yin is helping him. He basically hates everything now. Hyung No's mother silently goes back to her room and calls her husband. Hyung No's father picks up the call and reminds his wife that they already talked about it before. He tells her not to interfere with Hyung No's matters as she pleases. She gets mad and shouts something about Hyung No. Hyung No's father gets stunned and agrees to take care of some things. He hangs up the call and suddenly feels worried. He asks his secretary for the contact information of Kyung No's school. The principal bows down in front of nothing as he apologizes to Kyung No's father on the phone. He is the only one who knows Kyung No's parents. He swears to pay more attention to the matter. The call drops and the principal boils in anger. He scolds Kyung No's class advisor for ignoring his instructions to pay particular attention to Kyung No. He keeps scolding her until he almost lets slip something important. He claims he won't tolerate bullying in their school. Homeroom happens, and the advisor can still remember the principal's nagging. She starts scolding her class regarding bullying. She asks if someone will speak up, and Gu Hyung is nervous. Nam Su is not listening and only thinks about how to talk to Kyung Mo again. 
He recalls how Hyun mentions that Kyungo likes her friend So Yeon. Nansu clenches his fist as he recalls Hyun's words. During break time, Nansu walks somewhere. He arrives in a classroom, and Hyun gets surprised. She is happy that Namsu came for her, ready to hug him. However, Nansu faces So Yeon and checks her out. He wonders what made Hyungo like her. He claims he did more for Kyungo compared to So Yeon. So Yeon calls Namsu rude and claims that he is only doing those things to look good. After stating that he hates So Yeon, Namsu leaves the classroom while grumbling. Namsu scribbles in his notebook again and claims that he really hates So Yeon. He looks at the empty seat again with sad eyes. After all this time, he asks his seatmate for his name. He asks Kim Su for a pen, making Kim Su mad. He lets Namsu borrow one, but Namsu asks for a red pen. He starts scribbling again and uses the red pen as splattering blood in the scribbles. He scribbles Hyung Oh and himself while hoping that he will return to school soon. Two weeks later, a teacher posts something, knowing that he will be hated by the students. It is the examination schedule. A familiar squeaking sound can be heard in the lobby. Everyone looks at the door, and Jumsu asks if everything is fine now. Hyung Oh is finally back in his class. Jumsu acts worried and wishes the best for the exams. Kim Su comments on how cool and kind Jum Su is. The exams go on, where scribbles and warnings from the teacher are the only sounds inside the room. The students later compare answers while Hyung Oh stays silent as usual. Outside, Gu Hyung shouts out loud, and Sadia thinks he messed up the exam. However, Gu Hyung is only despairing because he can't get the chance to obtain a limited edition pair of shoes. He uses his brain to calculate the total amount he needs and where to steal some objects. He suddenly realizes that the solution was right in front of him. He calls himself a genius. Sei Yai thinks Gu Hyung took pills or something. Gu Hyung later brings Hyung Oh somewhere while proposing to start a business. Jim Su sees him leave and he returns to the classroom where others are looking for Hyung Oh. Sei Yi wonders what they are going to do, but Gu Hyung is just humming cheerfully. Sei Yi wonders why they brought Hyung Oh with them. Gu Hyung rummages through the trash and finds cardboard. He hangs it on Hyung Oh's neck. He rubs his hands on the dirt and rubs it later on Hyung Oh's face. Gu Hyung finds it perfect, but Sei Yai is kind of against it. They all set out for the subway while Hyung Oh has a sign asking for help because he is a cripple. Inside the train, Gu Hyung asks for the attention of the passengers. He presents themselves as brothers and asks for help. He makes up a dramatic story while pushing Hyung Oh around. He asks for charity, and Hyung Oh can't help but be silent. An old woman approaches them and cries. She gives them money and Gu Hyung gives his thanks. A woman asks her boyfriend to help too, but the man knows that it might be a scam. He exclaims for everyone to hear that this kind of scam is trending nowadays. He claims that anyone can sit in a wheelchair to look like a cripple. Gu Hyung gets mad at the man and shows Hyung Oh's thin legs. Hyung Oh continues to despair. Gu Hyung starts crying and everyone starts whispering about the man. He opens his wallet and Gu Hyung gives his thanks as he pulls out money from the man's wallet. Gu Hyung keeps thanking them until they get out of the subway. He calls himself a genius for collecting a lot of money in a short time. He then gives Hyung Oh a tip for working hard today. Hyung Oh pulls the money out and exclaims that he doesn't need it. He exclaims that he doesn't like Gu Hyung's dirty money and throws the money to the ground. Gu Hyung apologizes, but Sei Yi gets pissed off seeing Hyung Oh raising his voice against them. Sei Yi grabs Hyung Oh and beats him up until Hyung Oh gets left on the ground. Sei Yi warns him again. Gu Hyung looks back and reminds Sei Yi that they shouldn't mess with Hyung Oh. The two then leave. Hyung Oh starts calling himself an idiot and smacks his dead legs. That night, Hyung Oh silently scribbled some notes on his study table. He continued to write until blood fell from his nose. He checked the time and realized that he had stayed up too late. The final exams were done, and Hyung Oh's class advisor was having headaches because of him. She complained about how his parents insisted on sending a disabled kid to their school. Other teachers were amazed after seeing a paper and congratulated Hyung Oh's advisor. She later went to her class and cheerfully announced that someone in their class had gotten the top score. She then asked everyone to applaud. Everyone did so, and Joom Soo looked expectant. The teacher tapped his shoulder, and Joom Soo couldn't help but smile. However, she passed by him and went to the back. She also tapped on Hyung Oh and felt bad for him. She then woke up the sleeping Nam Soo and announced that he had gotten the top score this time. Hyungmo congratulated Nam Su, who smiled after hearing Kyung Oh's words. The teacher then angrily squished Gu Hyung's cheeks and asked him to see her after class. 
a student couldn't believe a class sleeper had gotten the highest score. While everyone was chattering, Jim Su fell silent. He scratched his pen on his notebook until it broke. Jim Su later went to the gym storage. The door opened, and the usual bully group appeared. Gu Hinung and Sei Yi started being noisy. Jim Su kicked Sei Yi and exclaimed how they had the nerve to be noisy in front of him. He sighed and suggested something fun to do. Later, So Yin greeted Jim Su in the hallways. They talked about the exams, and Hu Yan mentioned how So Yeon had gotten the highest score. Jim Su smiled and left the two girls. He then told So Yin that something fun would happen today. During recess, Nam Su still remembered how Kyung Ho had congratulated him. He went back to the classroom and wondered if Kyung Ho was still in the washroom. Someone came into the classroom humming and walked toward Nam Su. Meanwhile, Gu Hinung and Sei Yi brought Kyung Ho somewhere again. Kyung Ho was confused and scared, recalling what had happened before. Gang Sei got a chair and greeted Nam Su. However, Nam Su ignored him. Gang Sei then brought out a pair of glasses to get Nam Su's attention. Gang Sei wondered where Kyung Ho could have been and told Nam Su to save Kyung Ho from the bad guys. Nam Su stood and later followed Gang Sei. They arrived in the secluded alley, and Jang Su was also there. Nam Su wondered where Kyung Ho was. Gang Sei laughed at him, and Nam Su left. He pulled Nam Su back and made his bag spill its contents. Gang Sei picked up the notebook that Gu Hyung had mentioned before. He read through it and called Nam Su creepy while ripping the pages. Just when Gang Sei called Nam Su crazy, Jang Su's arm passed by him and grabbed Nam Su. Jang Su slammed Nam Su to the ground. Gang Se angrily asked what was wrong with Jang Su. Jang Su huffed as he wondered what that creepy look on Nam Su's face had been a while ago. He suddenly sweated and left. Gang Se wondered what was wrong, and they both left Nam Su on the ground. The notebook's pages flipped in the wind and showed a scribble that depicted Nam Su beating up the bullies for Kyung Meanwhile, Sei Yi keeps blaming Kyung for getting smacked by Jum Su. Gu Hinung tells Sei Yi to stop blaming Kyung Ho and claims that he feels sorry for him. Other students wonder why second year students are on their floor. Gu Hinung claims that they have reached their destination, but he feels like he can't do what he was asked. Sei Yi gets frustrated and starts dragging Kyung Ho around. He pulls down Han Ho's pants, and Han Ho trembles in despair. Sei Yi pushes the wheelchair, sending Kyung Ho rolling half naked into the classroom. Kyung Ho crashes inside hits his head on the lockers and falls to the ground. The girls in the classroom shriek and call hyung a pervert. hyung trembles as he tries to cover himself. hyu Yang notices that it is hyung and tells so Yeon. so Yeon then goes to check it out. She walks for hyung as he trembles in embarrassment. He hears the footsteps stop behind him. so Yeon uses her blazer to cover up hyung He hears so Yeon asking hyu Yang to get her gym clothes. He can barely see So Yin, who is trying to assure him that things are okay. Meanwhile, Nam Su wakes up and collects his things in bag. He goes back to the classroom and gets scolded by the teacher. Seeing that Hyung Ho is still missing, he goes back outside. He runs through the hallways as he looks for Kyung Ho. Then he sees a wheelchair in a hallway. He discovers the wheelchair in front of the restricted rooftop. Nam Su looks at the open door above the stairs. As he goes up the stairs, Nam Su sees bloodstains. He arrives at the rooftop and finds a half-naked Hyung Ho crawling on the floor. He walks toward Kyung Ho, who is trying his best to reach his destination. Nam Su then sits down and calls out to Kyung Ho. Hyung Ho ignores him and starts climbing the wired fence. Nam Su tries to stop him, but Hyung Ho slaps his hand. Nam Su stops him again. Hyung Ho slaps Nam Su's hand once more. Hyung Ho insists on climbing the fence. Nam Su grabs Hyung Ho's hands and asks if he wants to harm himself. Hyung-ho starts cursing at nam Su for being annoying. nam Su cheerfully asks Hyung-ho to calm down and assures him that he can help him. nam Su asks Hyung-ho not to die. Tears run down Hyung-ho's cheeks. He continues to cry as nam Su understands what Hyung-ho wants. Night comes, and Hyung-ho continues opening up to nam Su. He tells him that he doesn't know why he is being targeted after the midterm exams. nam Su smiles and offers his help. Hyung-ho remembers thinking about death, but now he doesn't even know how he got to the rooftop. He wonders why nam Su is being nice to him. nam Su tells him that it is for no reason at all. Just then, they hear someone shouting kyung name. It is his driver who is looking for him. kyung panics about what to do. nam Su just smiles at him. The driver gets mad at kyung and threatens to report it to his mother. He tells kyung to make sure to tell his mother everything about his injuries and missing glasses. kyung looks back and thanks nam Su. 
Nansu watches them leave and tells Hyungno not to worry. He swears to help Hyungno with everything, even without his pants. A cheerful Nansu hums in the morning as he gets ready for school. As classes begin, the teacher announces that Kyungno will be absent for a few days and asks classmates to check on him. Some students are relieved when Hyungno is not around. Jim Su, the school president, reminds everyone to be kind since they are all friends, but a classmate dismisses Jim Su's niceness. The teacher urges them to visit Kyungno if they have time and emphasizes the importance of upcoming exams. A late student, Gu Hyung, enters the classroom and receives a scolding from the teacher. Gu Hyun makes up an excuse about the subway delay, settles into his seat, and happily reveals the new shoes he bought after borrowing from Hyungno. He shows off the shoes to his classmates, while Nam Su silently observes. During lunch break, students disperse to get their meals, including Gu Hyung, who reluctantly puts his cherished shoes back in his bag. He leaves the classroom crying, resembling a scene from a Korean drama. Nam Su, left alone, smirks and gazes at Gu Hyung's bag. After lunch, Gu Hyung is astonished as he checks his bag and frantically searches the classroom, while Nam Su nonchalantly yawns. Gu Hyung notices Nam Su wearing his new shoes and becomes agitated. He struggles to focus during classes, continuously following Nam Su until the afternoon break. Meanwhile, Nam Su cheerfully engages in a game of soccer with others, unaware of Gu Hyung's growing frustration. Gu Hyung eventually sees the tag on the shoes and realizes they are indeed his own. He becomes angry but can only silently tail Nam Su until school is over. Gu Hyung persistently follows Nam Su until they are alone, where he confronts Nam Su, accusing him of theft. Gu Hyung demands that Nam Su return the shoes or face the consequences. Despite Gu Hyung's pleading, Nam Su refuses to give them back. Nam Su continues to step on puddles cheerfully, while Gu Hyung is feeling heartbroken seeing the shoes get dirty. His face looks like he was painted out of the scream. Gu Hyung tries to calm down Nam Su. Nam Su then taps Gu Hyung's head and lightly pushes him down. Gu Hyung's bully personality comes out and starts getting mad. Just then, Nam Su surprisingly kicks his lower jaw and Gu Hyung bites his tongue. Blood splatters and Gu Hyung trembles in pain. He continues to bleed and Nam Su grabs his head. Nam Su starts smacking him. Gu Hyung, who is in pain, tries to shove Nam Su away. However, Nam Su wonders why Gu Hyung is not having fun. He climbs on top of the bully and starts punching him. Gu Hyung can only wriggle in pain. Nam Su asks Gu Hyung to move his hands and starts punching his face. Gu Hyung gets beaten up as previous scenes of him bullying Kim Mo flash. Nam Su keeps on telling Gu Hyung not to harass Hyung Mo anymore while he continues to crush Gu Hyung's face. He makes a fist with both hands and smacks Gu Hyung's face. Just then, Nam Su notices something. He picks up a brick and continues to hit Gu Hyung with it. Gu Hyang's face was totally crushed along with the brick. Nam Su lets out a deep sigh and removes the shoes. He makes sure that it is placed on the ground properly and leaves it with Gu Hyang. As he walks away, Nam Su notices the blood on his hands. He wipes it on his uniform and cheerfully leaves the scene. At the hospital, Gu Hyang's mother weeps upon seeing her son's disfigured face. The doctor explains that the stress disorder could be a result of the sudden injury, and Gu Hyang remains unconscious due to the head trauma. Despite the doctor's attempts to console her, Gu Hyang's mother can only shed tears for her unconscious son. The following day, Jang Su menacingly enters the hallway and encounters Nam Su. They lock eyes, pass by each other, and Nam Su deliberately bumps into Jang Su. Enraged, Jang Su grabs Nam Su by the neck, his anger escalating. In a flashback, Jang Su is working out in the school gym under the watchful eye of his coach. Jang Su takes a break to drink water but the coach insists he should continue until he bleeds, reminding Jang Su of an owed debt. The coach then instructs the other students and leaves. Gang Se enters the gym, calling out to Jang Su, but gets ignored. He informs Jang Su about Gu Hyung's condition, questioning if someone fought with him. Jang Su dismisses him, prioritizing an upcoming competition. Gang Se departs, and Jang Su resumes his intense training. Returning to the present, Jang Su is now choking Nam Su. Nam Su apologizes for the collision, but Jang Su maintains his grip, warning Nam Su not to manger him. Jang Su orders him to leave and walks away. Struggling for air, Nam Su realizes Jang Su's immense strength. A classmate advises Nam Su to go to the nurse's office. Jang Su vividly remembers Nam Su's appearance before he left, branding him a creep. Meanwhile, Sei Yi bullies his overweight classmates for no reason, until he is confronted. 
Spotting Jiang Su, he questions why he's in his class and wonders about Gu Kiang's absence. Jiang Su slaps Sei Yi, who complains and curses at him while he leaves. Jiang Su resolves to endure and trains diligently, focusing on reclaiming his honor. He tirelessly prepares for the upcoming competition, chugging his sports drink and replenishing his energy. When his coach tells him to prepare, Jiang Su stands up, reminded that this is his final opportunity. Together, they make their way to the stage, where Jiang Su steals himself for victory. In the competition, Jiang Su effortlessly defeated all his opponents, impressing his coach with his tenacity. Only Kang Miang Shik, the strongest contender in his weight class, remains. Jiang Su is determined to win. Despite Miang Shik's disrespectful remarks and taunts about Jiang Su's past ear tearing incident, Jiang Su remains focused and extends his hand. He earns a point by slamming Miang Shik to the floor. As the referee instructs them to resume their positions, Jiang Su's mind is consumed with thoughts of conquering everyone in the competition. A sketch resembling Jiang Su is seen in a notebook. After Jiang Su's victory in the judo competition, the school celebrated with pride. The vice principal proudly introduced Jiang Su to the entire school, who received applause from everyone. Students had also seen the news online. While Gang Se felt proud, Sei Yi was jealous of his friend's achievement. Jim Su joined in the applause, while Nan Su admired Jiang Su from the stage. In the principal's office, the principal felt immense pride for Jiang Su's accomplishments, as it was the school's first gold medal. Adults chatted about Jiang Su, including his past mistakes. The principal urged them to leave those mistakes behind and called for a meeting to adjust the athletic department's budget. The coach expressed gratitude to Jiang Su, and the excitement overwhelmed him. Just then, a faculty member knocked on the door, and government officials from Korea's Sports Committee's investigation team entered. They had arrived in response to a cooperation request and discovered that Jiang Su had tested positive for banned substances in the pre-competition drug test. Jiang Su felt hopeless upon hearing this news. Later, his coach scolded him harshly for using diuretics to lose weight. Jiang Su denied any knowledge, his face contorting in despair. His mind was filled with thoughts even during classes, and he mumbled to himself, causing his classmates to avoid him. Sadi approached Jiang Su and offered him some favorite snacks. When Jiang Su checked the bag and didn't find his pizza, he menacingly demanded an explanation from Sei Ye. Sei Ye nervously laughed it off, claiming he might have forgotten it. Jiang Su's anger escalated, and he grabbed Sei Ye, throwing him onto the desk. The desks behind them fell into disarray as Jiang Su's classmates called him out. Suddenly, Jiang Su noticed something that widened his eyes a sports bottle and an unfamiliar medicine bottle rolling out from Sei Ye's desk. Jiang Su picked them up and question Seiji about their presence. Seiji is visibly confused. Jiang Su shouts out loud and throws a desk at Seiji. Seiji apologizes for the pizza, but Jiang Su starts beating him up. Seiji continues to apologize, but Jiang Su is ruthlessly beating him up. No one can stop his rage. Students start flocking outside the classroom. The vice principal comes to check on what is happening and tries to stop the student who brought disgrace to their school. He taps on Jiang Su's shoulder and Jiang Su reflexively elbows the vice principal. Everyone was shocked, including Jiang Su. He suddenly calms down and sees his coach at the door. He continues to claim he doesn't know about the drugs. A stick comes flying and hits Jiang Su, making him bleed. Jiang Su starts going hysterical and starts shouting. Everyone knows that this is an immediate expulsion. Someone comes to pick up the sports bottle and leaves the scene. He puts it in his backpack and brings out a familiar notebook. The notebook opens and shows Jiang Su's scribble. Nam Su smiles as he crosses out Jiang Su. He smirks as he suddenly misses Xiangno. The rumors have also reached Gang Se's ears. He knows that something is off about this situation. Gang Se soon discovers Jiang Su being arrested. Jiang Su looks anxious and keeps claiming that it was not him. He continues to deny it and claims that something is weird. Gang Se knows what's up and walks towards somewhere. He goes back to the classroom. He knows that Jiang Su won't do such a thing because judo is his life. He wonders what is happening around them. He suddenly remembers Wu Hyun. After school, he went to the hospital. As he walks in the hallway, he hears officers talking about Gu Hyun being a thief and scammer who might have gotten beaten up by his victims. However, Gang Se doesn't believe so. He checks on Gu Hyun, who is oddly silent for him. Just then, Gu Hyun starts mumbling some words. Gang Se gets confused. Gu Hyun starts mumbling louder as he recalls the bloody scene he encountered. Recalling Nam Su's red eyes, Gu Hyun can only scream. The doctors who heard him scream checked on him. 
Gang Se tries to decipher what Gu Kiang is shouting. He observes his mouth and manages to realize that Gu Kiang is calling Kiang No. Gang Se leaves the hospital looking confused. Meanwhile, Nam Su discovers a teddy bear that looks like Kiang No. He also tries to look for a hairpin and even asks some random girls about it. He picks a pink tie, and the girls wonder if it is for his girlfriend. However, he mentions a man's name, and the girls are shocked, misunderstanding his orientation. On the other hand, a frustrated Hyung No wonders how long he will be at home. He does realize that some things can't be helped. He knows that he can't go back after his embarrassing moments. Just then, his mother surprises him. She asks him to come out with teary eyes. She claims that a friend has come. Nan Su found Hyung No's house. Hyung No wonders who it could be. Soon after, Hyung No's mother excitedly cooked a lot of food. She wonders how long the two have been friends. Nam Su claims that Hyung No has helped him a lot since he transferred to their class. Nam Su also brought a lot of gifts for Hyung No. Nam Su hands out the pretty ribbon. Hyung No's mother thanks Nam Su, but Nam Su pulls back his hand. He claims that it is for Hyung No. The mother and son get flustered and claim that it is okay. Hyung No's mother smiles as she watches the two laugh together. She then comments on how the two of them looked alike. Hyung No laughs it off and claims that the handsome Nam Su might get offended. The two later go to Kyung No's room. Hyung No's mother is glad to see her son smiling. She then checks on the gift basket that Nam Su brought and she flinches as she discovers a pair of shoes. She thinks that Nam Su just made a mistake. Meanwhile, Hyung No tells Nam Su that he should come, but the latter honestly tells the former that he misses him. Hyung No tells Nam Su to sit anywhere, but the bed is the only available spot. Hyung No apologizes since he didn't have anyone in his room before. Nam Su is happy that he is the first one. Hyung No then wonders if Nam Su's parents are worried that he is late. Nam Su claims that it is okay since they are already dead. Hyung No apologizes, but Nam Su expresses that it is fine. Nam Su continues giggling as he comments on how the teddy bear looks like Hyung No. Just then, Hyung No remembers something and gets something. He brings out the shoes and pants that Nam Su lent him before. He thanks Nam Su for helping him before and asks him to forget his embarrassing moments. Nam Su's hands tremble in excitement, and it looks like Kyung No has nothing to worry about. Nam Su swears to help Kyung No with everything. He wonders if he can sleep in tonight. Kyung No agrees, and Nam Su gets excited again. Nam Su wears Kyung No's clothes, but they're too small for him. Kyung No's mother decides to get her husband's extra clothes. Later, Kyung No's mother wishes them a good night. Kyung No worries, but Nam Su is fine sleeping on the floor. He giggles as he tells Kyung No good night. Hyung No puts down his glasses and thinks that this is just a dream. He instantly falls asleep. Hyung No's father arrives and hears about a friend's visit. His mother is glad to see Hyung No smiling. His father tells her to wait for their son to open up about his problems. Hyung No is sleeping soundly, but Nam Su is still awake. He gets up and squeezes Hyung No's hands like it's a familiar thing to do. Nam Su smiles as he watches Hyung No's sleeping face. Morning comes and Hyung No gets surprised by the teddy bear. He discovers that Nam Su has already left. Later at school, Gang Se goes off somewhere. He walks toward Jum Su, who is acting silent and proper. He smiles and greets Jum Su and wonders if he heard about Jang Su because he can't get in touch with him. Jum Su sighs and claims that he has nothing to do with him. Silence falls upon the two. Gang Se laughs it off and claims that Jum Su might know since he is the school president. Jim Su then claims that there is no other place for Jang Su aside from the juvenile prison. He tells Gang Se to focus on worrying about himself. Gang Se laughs as he claims that he won't live a stuck up life like Jim Su. Jim Su shuts him up and reminds him not to be familiar with him. Gang Se throws and smashes his candy, then walks away. He then walks toward Nam Su and wakes him up with a kick. Nam Su gets confused and Gang Se greets him. He can't believe Nam Su can sleep well despite the school having issues lately. He keeps tapping Nam Su's face and calling him funny. Gang Se laughs out loud and warns Nam Su to keep things in moderation. He slaps Nam Su and leaves the room. Jum Su can only smirk. Meanwhile, Se Yai is being chased by someone. It is the three fat students he bullied before. He gets into the room and gets mad at them. The three menacingly glare at him as a tease and Se Yi can only warn them with words. Sei Yi then complains to Gang Se that things went downhill for them since Gu Hyung and Jang Su got messed up. Gang Se tells Sei Yi to be quiet. Sei Yi continues shouting at the nerds and asks Gang Se for support. Gang Se gets mad. He slaps Sei Yi and leaves. Sei Yi gets surrounded 
and the nerds drop a single 101 coin. Sayi gets confused. The nerds then ordered him to buy them snacks. Sayi laughs in disbelief, but he is told to shut up. Sayi can only laugh at his current situation. He closes his eyes and dashes to escape. He gets outside the room and threatens the nerds again. Later that afternoon, Gang Sei follows Namsu. It suddenly starts snowing, and our pretty So Yeon is amazed by it. She suddenly sees Hu Yan running past her. She wonders if her friend is going with them, and Hu Yan claims that she has something important to do. As Hu Yan runs off somewhere, we can see Sei Yi acting almighty behind the girls. He bumps into a classmate and gets mad at him, even though he is the one who made the mistake. The student then curses at Sei Yi. Sei Yi can't believe what he just heard and starts smacking his classmate. As he continues to call himself great, Sei Yi meets a fist on his face. Everyone starts hearing Sei Yi cry out loud. The classmate continues beating up Sei Yi. Sei Yi continues to call himself mighty. The classmate tells Sei Yi to stop already. Everyone laughs at Sei Yi for acting tough despite being weak and a moron. The classmate warns Sei Yi not to mess with him again and leaves the beaten up bully alone. Just then, a 101 coin drops to the ground, and the three nerds appear again. Sei-Yi looks at it, and hears the three nerds order him to buy them snacks. Meanwhile, Gang Sei walks on the snowy road. He wonders where Namsu is going for half an hour. He notices how Namsu is just walking in circles. Just then, he lost sight of Namsu. He runs as he chases Namsu. Gang Sei sees his target turning a corner and chases him again. Gang Sei keeps running around in circles, and he totally lost Namsu. He reaches a dead stop and curses out loud. He complains about how cold it is, and Gang Sei lights up a cigarette. He gets burned and suddenly gets more pissed off. As he leaves, he hears a creaking sound nearby. It was the nearby abandoned house's gates. Gang Sei looks up and sees nothing in the house. He falls silent for a minute and laughs as he gets scared a little. He suddenly hears footsteps in the opposite direction and nervously waits to see who will appear. It was Hu Yang walking around and complaining about the cold weather. The two meet each other, and Hu Yang lets out a loud scream. She claims that she lost something in the area. Gang Sei wonders what it is. Hu Yang excitedly claims that it was her boyfriend, Nam Su. Gang Sei gets enlightened and wonders if he can ask some things about Nam Su. Hu Yang complains that there is another boy getting interested in Nam Su. Gang Sei gets confused and mentions Hong No. Gang Sei wants to know more and follows Hu Yang. As the two argued on the road, Nansu was in the abandoned building, watching and hearing everything. Nansu menacingly stared at Gang Sei's back and left the area with Gang Sei's face scribbled on the cold window glass. The next day, Gang Sei continues to ponder losing track of Nansu. He feels sleepy and can see his lips cracking due to staying outside in the snow. Meanwhile, Sei is busy delivering food. As he runs, he reminisces about the times he had with his friends and now he is left all alone as a food shuttle. He passes by Namsu, who sees him being obedient to the nerds. Later during classes, the teacher reminds the students to study harder, especially Gang Se. Gang Se laughs it off and claims that he will just inherit his dad's business. The teacher can't even refute it and continues to remind the students to do better in their senior year. The class is ended and everyone went home. Gang Se hails a taxi and the radio keeps talking about an incoming heavy snowfall. The driver complains about it, and Gang Sei can only wish him luck. He later arrives at his father's bar and tries to order the waiter around. The waiter can only keep his anger to himself. Gang Sei gets a call from his friends, but he declines their invitation. He drops the call and immediately gets another one. He exclaims that he is not going. He flips to the side, and his phone rings. He angrily checks the message and falls silent upon reading it. His eyes widen as he reads through the long chain of messages. His phone keeps getting messages every second. It was from Hyung-ho, asking to meet up and talk over their misunderstandings. Gang Se grins after knowing Hyung-ho is reaching the end of the rope. He replies that he will be there. Gang Se prepares to leave and looks back at the sofas. He recalls the days when he enjoyed the place with his friends. However, he assures himself that it's going to be more fun now. His friends later find him outside, but he ignores them as he calls someone. He asks Joom Su if he saw what he sent him. He mentions how Hyung Ho wants to meet behind the construction site, where they all have precious memories. Gang Se is just informing Joom Su to let him in on the fun. He drops the call because he doesn't want Hyung Ho to wait. Later at the construction site, Gang Se climbs the stairs and realizes that he needs to stop smoking. Still, he continues to smoke some as he takes a break. He asks if Hyung Ho wants one. Hyung Ho gets flustered 
and Gang Se starts pushing the wheelchair towards something while talking. Hemno asks why he is being bullied and wonders what he can do to apologize to them. Hemno shouts and asks, what did he do wrong in the first place? Gang Se gets mad and kicks the wheelchair. He continues kicking it until it moves forward. Hemno's wheelchair crashes. Gang Se can't believe what he is seeing. He is confused to see Hemno stand. Hemno removes his glasses as he continues making sounds that indicate he is in pain. In the nearby bathroom, hair dye, scissors, and hair are scattered on the sink. Gang Se looks down and up. He laughs as he is amazed by Namsu's efforts and calls him a psycho. He claims Namsu can't make him feel scared. Namsu then starts walking toward Gang Se and stares menacingly. Gang Se tells Namsu to stay away as he backs off. Namsu stops and tells him to be careful. Gang Se trips on something and steps on a nail. He can only scream in pain and curse out loud. Namsu tries to help him, but Gang Se slaps Namsu's hand. Namsu warns Gang Se not to slap him again and shows his menacing red eyes. Gang Se flinches as he recalls Jang Su's instincts from before. Namsu lifts a piece of wood and hits Gang Se. Gang Se then blocks with his arms and hands. He gets confused seeing Namsu silent and weaponless. The piece of wood with a nail on it is currently stuck in Gang Se's hand. It bleeds as he pulls it out and starts screaming again. His screams echo through the whole building. Namsu then hits Gang Se again, but to the head this time. Gang Se then lost consciousness and fell to the floor. However, Namsu only uses the blunt part to knock out Gang Se. Gang Se soon wakes up in a state of confusion. He is sitting in a wheelchair while his hands and feet are punctured. Namsu appears and makes airplane sounds. He pushes Gang Se forward as he announces that they are ready to take off. Gang Se gets nervous as he sees that he is going to be pushed off of the building. Namsu pushes the wheelchair until it reaches the very edge of the floor. Gang Se just silently clenches his wounded hand. He can clearly recall the time when it was him doing the same thing to the helpless Hyungno. He and his group were bullying Hyungno at that time. Gang Se can only gasp for air as he finds himself in the same situation. Namsu then takes off and leaves Gang Se alone. Gang Se's phone suddenly rings, and he manages to pick it up. Jim Su wonders how things went with him and Kyungno. Gang Se sighs and starts cursing at Jim Su. He mentions how Jim Su started everything and calls him a bastard. Gang Se laughs as he continues cursing Jim Su. Jim Su tells Gang Se that he just lost his dad's business and drops the call. Jim Su continues studying and his phone rings. He picks up his phone and sees messages from Kyungno. He lets out a deep sigh, knowing what is going on. He gets up from his desk and goes outside. He sees the exact messages that Gang Se has received. However, Kyung Ho is asking him to meet at the intersection. He later meets Kyung Ho at a busy intersection. Kyung Ho wonders why Jum Su is outside late at night. Jum Su laughs and commends his acting. Kyung Ho gets flustered and asks to talk somewhere. Jum Su slaps Kyung Ho. Kyung Ho tries to apologize, but Jum Su grabs him, calls him Nam Su, and tells him to stop the crippled act. He shows the messages he got from the bullies as he proudly claims that he was enjoying the sight from the sidelines. He slaps Hyung Ho again and calls him a loser. Hyung Ho's mother comes out of the building with their driver. She looks to the side and drops her shopping bags. She checks on Hyung Ho, who is beaten up. Jim Su then claims that it is not Hyung Ho but Nam Su instead. He insists that it is not Hyung Ho and lifts him up. He claims that it is not Hyung Ho as he released the cripple to the ground. Jim Su gets confused. He grabs Hyung Ho again and tells him to stop acting like a cripple. However, it is really Hyung Ho, not Nam Su. Just then, Jum Su gets slapped so hard by Hyung Ho's mother. Soon at the police station, Hyung Ho's mother complains in rage as Hyung Ho and Jum Su just sit down on the side silently. Jum Su looks to the side and smirks as he is confident that he can get out, knowing that his father is the police chief. The police on duty tried to calm Hyung Ho's mother. She claims that someone called her after accidentally getting Hyung Ho's phone. In a flashback, she received a call from Hyung Ho. Even though he was just in the house, she picked up the call and found out that it was Nam Su who mistakenly took Hyung Ho's phone. Nam Ho tried to go out with their driver, but she insisted on going together. While waiting for Nam Su, Jum Su starts attacking Hyung Ho. Jum Su confidently smiles as he knows that his father is coming. Just then, some people in proper uniform arrive at the police station. A police officer recognizes the man but dismisses him as a lookalike. Hyung Ho's mother continues ranting until the police officer tries to shoo away someone else. The woman claims they have come for Kyung Ho. The police officer receives the business card.
Hanmo's mother keeps exclaiming that the same thing must have happened before. Jumsu tells them that they have said enough. He tells them to give it a rest because Kyungho is not their son in the first place. Everyone immediately falls into silence, including Kyungho, who looks like he got the idea from the start. The police officer trembles as he reads the business card from the congressman. Jumsu's father smacks him. He crashes on the floor and bleeds. He grabs Jumsu and starts apologizing to Kyungho's father. The chief tries to beat up his son, but the congressman tells him to stop. Kyungho's mother breaks down. The congressman silently shifts his gaze to Kyungho and his wife. He asks his secretary to take care of them. However, his wife wants to see Jumsu punished for what he did to Kyungho. Her husband shouts at her to go home. She suddenly falls silent, and the secretary escorts Kyungho and his mother. The congressman claims it is better to leave children's spats alone. He asks Jumsu not to cause too much trouble for Kyungho, for he doesn't want to meet Jumsu like this again. Jumsu's father obediently thanks the congressman and sees him off. Jumsu's father grabs him and commends him for his actions. Well, like father, like son. His father mentions how the weak should grovel before the strong. He reminds Jumsu to study harder to achieve great heights. He tells Jumsu to take today's event as a lesson. Jumsu then starts acting like he owns the police station. Outside, Hyungo and his mother are escorted inside the car. The secretary comments on how devastated looking the madam is compared to her father's death. On the other hand, Hyungo now fully realizes that there was really a gap in his relationship with his parents. He is sure that his parents felt it too. Meanwhile, the congressman limps near the police station's entrance and sees someone pass by him. He saw the boy walk off cheerfully and thought it was Hyungo. It was Namsu cheerfully entering the police station. He passes through everyone, and the police officer on desk duty tells him to go to the side. Namsu goes to the side, and squeaking noises cover the silent lobby. He sits beside Jumsu with the chair he has got to confess to his crime. Just look at Jumsu's crazy smile. The confused police officer asks what crimes, and Namsu then starts talking about beating up Mengu Hyung in an alleyway on the 11th. He also confesses that he mixed drugs in Hong Jang Su's water bottle, which led the judo competitor to fail the competition. The police officer tells him to stop joking around. However, Nam Su claims that he is telling the truth. For Song Se Yi, Nam Su just laughs and tells him to forget about it. The police officer then gets mad and threatens Nam Su with being thrown in jail. Nam Su then brings out his phone, which has evidence of him calling out Gang Se. He tells him to get the injured Gang Se or he might freeze to death. He also brings out a bloody piece of paper. He claims that Gang Se is also bleeding to death. The police officer unwraps the paper and calls it gum instead. He then orders another cop to check on a construction site. Nam Su even gives them accurate instructions. The police officer warns him of obstruction of justice. Nam Su still claims that he is not lying. Nam Su then shifts his gaze to Jum Su and starts talking. However, Jum Su interrupts him and asks the officer to have Nam Su for himself for a talk. The two glare at each other, and the police officer can't help but be obedient to their chief's only son. He then gets his cigarettes and leaves the lobby. Jum Su then starts talking about his daily school schedule. He then notices something weird on the walls of the stairs. He claims that he always liked his school, and he got upset after seeing it damaged. Jum Su asks Nam Su if he understands him. Meanwhile, the police officer complains about how the son is acting like a trashy father. Just then, he receives a call from the dispatched police officers. They found Gang Se bleeding on the sixth floor of a construction site. The police officer drops his cigarette and dopes the call. He recalls the cheerful confessions of Namsu. He recalls how much of a psycho Namsu is. He runs back to the office, thinking about Jimsu. He returns and discovers blood on lobby floor. Jumsu is standing, while Namsu is on the floor. Jumsu wonders what is wrong. A minute ago, Jumsu started beating up Namsu, who had just received all his punches and kicks. Jumsu smacks Namsu one more time. The other police officers don't even mind what Jumsu is doing. He grabs Namsu's head and asks him what will happen after this situation. Jumsu starts laughing hysterically and confesses that he will murder Kyungo this time. He releases Namsu's hair, and this is now the scene the police officer discovered. Jumsu picks up the chair and sits down. He is amazed that his expensive watch was not even scratched. The police officer gets fidgety as Jumsu's father returns. Jumsu's father then tells him to clean up the mess on the floor. He checks on Jumsu, who looks fine, and sees Namsu on the floor. He orders the others to clean up the garbage on his floor. The police officer then checks on Namsu. 
Jiam Su and his father try to leave, but Jun Su turns back to get something. He picks up Nun Su's phone and starts smashing it on the floor. Nun Su sees Jun Su leave with his father. Nun Su then remembers his dirty room and his favorite notebook. He stands up and asks the police officer for a minute. One of the pages of his notebook shows murdering Jun Su as his next action. He tells the officer that he has one more thing to talk about with his friend. The police officer tells him to make it quick. Nam Su walks forward with wobbly legs. He gasps for air and calls Jum Su's name. Jum Su looks behind. Nam Su starts apologizing to him. He claims that it was all his fault. Jum Su smirks and turns around. Just then, the police officer shouts out Jum Su's name. Nam Su quickly runs with his long legs and picks up the nearby fire extinguisher. He runs toward Jum Su while hysterically laughing. It was too late for Jum Su to notice and got hit by the fire extinguisher. The police chief watches his son fall to the floor. He tries to check on his son, but Nam Su kicks him away. The police officers all move to stop Nam Su. Nam Su then steps on Jum Su's ankle. As Jum Su calls Nam Su nothing and crazy, the fire extinguisher flies to Jum Su's knees. While in pain, Nam Su continues hitting Jum Su's legs with the fire extinguisher. The pain is enough to make Jum Su scream out loud. Both of his legs get beaten down by Nam Su's fire extinguisher smashing skills. The police officers then grab Nam Su and pin him down. Nam Su lifts his fist and hits Jum Su's knee once more. He continues smacking Jum Su. Everyone finally stops Nam Su, who is already handcuffed. Nam Su continues to pant while on the floor. He smiles as he achieves his goal. Tears fell from his eyes. Strange enough, Hyun Lo also starts crying. Days and nights pass by. The new school year starts and everyone goes to their respective classes. Nam Su's seatmate almost got lost. They are now seniors and most of their classmates are competitive when it comes to grades. Seeing how his new seatmate acts, Nam Su's seatmate suddenly misses him. He wonders what happened to Nam Su. The homeroom teacher comes, who was in shock after meeting Kyungho's parents minutes ago. They are processing Kyungho's transfer to another school. Nam Su's seatmate didn't even know that Kyungho had that background. He then remembers Jum Su, who is also missing in their classroom. His seatmate then claims that this is a blessing for them since the three top students are gone. Nan Su's seatmate now realizes why everyone is acting studious suddenly. Meanwhile, in another high school, a wheelchair squeaking sound echoes in the corridor. The homeroom teacher introduces a new transfer student. He asks the class to take care of their new crippled friend. The others laugh at getting a new classmate in their senior year. The teacher tells the transfer student to take a seat at the back. He moves through the silent room with squeaking noises from his wheelchair. His seatmate hopes he can be friends with the cripple. The cripple trembles with anxiety as everyone in the class laughs at him. Jim Su is a transfer student. Many years ago, a man happily bought fried chicken for his wife. He smiled brightly as he left the food stall without getting his change. He arrived home and greeted his pouty wife. She declines his kiss because he reeks of alcohol. He gave reasons that his boss forced him, but he did buy some chicken for his lovely wife. He bought it for her cravings and morning sickness. She later enjoyed the chicken as her husband watched her eat. He commended her, and the wife blushed. He can't believe that the huge belly is now flat as a board. He commended her for doing well. The wife blushed and exclaimed how hard it is to carry and deliver twins. The husband can't believe that their children are quiet. The husband then suggested to her that she visit her parents, but she was unwilling to go. She wanted to focus on her happiness and their family of four. The husband agreed and leaned forward. As he tried to kiss her, the doorbell rang. The husband went to check, and it was their neighbor next door. She claimed that there was a leak, and the wife thinks it was when they installed the baby bath. The husband checked on the peephole and opened the door. With a dark expression, the woman wondered why the couple was living happily, unlike her. Later that night, neighbors who were peacefully sleeping woke up to the cries of the babies. Everyone gathered around as they complained about the noise. The police came after getting a noise complaint. They started knocking on the couple's apartment. Seeing that the door won't open, they call for an expert. The expert asked them to take responsibility for breaking in. He easily opened the door and discovered a puddle of blood on the doorstep. He freaked out after seeing something. The police officer discovered the husband lying in his own pool of blood. He also discovered the gloomy neighbor and ordered her to drop her weapon. The crazy woman started claiming that it was not her. They continued cornering her until the woman reached the baby's room. She continued to step back while screaming that it was not her. Just then, she heard a crunching sound. She accidentally stepped on the legs of one of the babies. 
the baby started crying out loud, and the woman kept denying that it was not her. Distracted, the police officers disarmed and apprehended her. The injured baby continues to cry out loud, and his twin brother subconsciously grabs his twin's hand, like he is consoling the other. Later, a wealthy woman cheerfully prepared to go outside. She tells her husband to get going. The husband told his wife not to worry since he would convince his parents. She assured her anxious husband that this was their life now. They leave a familiar looking house. The two later arrived at an orphanage where they checked on abandoned babies. The woman continued checking on the babies with prejudice about their looks. She then discovers a pretty looking baby boy. She asked if she could hold him and the caretaker got flustered. The woman wondered if she couldn't and the caretaker explained that she could. The woman held the baby high up and discovered his limping leg. The caretaker claimed that the baby got into an accident. The woman found it a shame and put down the baby, who we all knew. She then discovered her identical twin brother. The woman did not hesitate to pick up the other child. She calls him perfect and asks for her husband's opinion. Seeing that his wife was happy, the husband went ahead and agreed. The caretaker then lets them take the baby away and looks at the twin brother who was left behind. However, the caretaker didn't care too much. Soon after, the baby starts crying on his own. Another couple is being led toward the baby's room. They find the crippled baby crying all alone. The caretaker tries to calm him down and the couple watches her. The wife then asks if she can hold the baby. The caretaker claims it is fine, but the baby is crippled. The wife claims that it is fine and she holds the crippled baby in her arms. The caretaker tells the couple about the baby's sad backstory and claims that his growth is bound to be stunted. He won't also be able to walk soon after he grows up. The caretaker just noticed that the twin brother is now gone. She apologizes as she tries to check the records. The baby continues to cry as two familiar faces gaze upon him. Meanwhile, the couple from before are enjoying the new son that they got. Of course, the congressman and his wife got the crippled baby. And just like that, the brothers go on their separate ways. The healthy twin brother sleeps peacefully in his cradle. A lot of baby stuff is scattered sound the house. The wife sticks to her husband as she claims that she is now happy as she got a baby boy and the man she loves beside her. They both express their love for each other. The wife then wonders if the husband is free for the next day. To fill the empty wall, she wants to take a family photo with their little Namsu. The family of three then went to the photo studio. Namsu starts noticing something in the air. He tries to catch them, but they disappear. He cries out loud and the husband gets flustered. The wife gets Namsu and tries to calm him down. The husband suddenly gets a call and apologizes, saying that it came from his mother. The wife tells him not to apologize since he knows he has a family with her and Namsu. He ignores the call and puts down his phone. A staff then leads the husband somewhere. The wife is left behind with Namsu. The photographer later gets their attention and takes a photo of the three. The wife hums as she feels peaceful with her son and her loving husband. The couple starts talking about their next plans and dates. The woman then notices a truck in front of them, and they bump into it. They got into an accident. The husband checks on his wife, but the truck totally crushes the left side of the car. The husband despairs as his wife dies. He only had Namsu on his side. Everyone starts chatting about the misery of the wife and how they adopted a child. The husband's mother starts scolding him for not following her words. She tells her that the husband is indeed cursed. Their family photo got hung up but the house is in a mess. Namsu grew up with his father drinking alcohol every day. Namsu puts down a paper in front of his father. All the papers are marked with perfect scores. Namsu goes to his desk to continue studying while listening to his father regret adopting Namsu in the first place. He continues calling Namsu a curse. However, the boy looks up at the bright sun and just falls asleep on his desk. Namsu turns into a high schooler and that is when he discovers his father is dead. Still, Namsu continues preparing his perfectly marked test papers. He notices how his father still grips the same paper in his hand. He gets it out of curiosity and reads it. He smiles as he reads through his adoption papers. His original name was Soon, alongside his brother's name, Sung Man. He hugs the paper and brings out his favorite notebook. He writes his name, Lee Soon, on it and draws scribbles of the brothers being together. Meanwhile, kang -ho lives well with his family and has the habit of greeting his politician father when he gets home. However, he feels distant, so kang -ho focuses more on his studies. His father is hesitant to get closer to kang -ho. Still, during his meal, he still asks for kang -ho's well-being. The congressman's wife knows the congressman is tired, but she tells him to cheer up. Surprisingly, kang -ho appears. He wonders if he can go to another school. 
The mother wonders if there is something wrong with the current school. Hemmo claims that there is nothing wrong and that he just wants to experience regular school life. He asks his father if it is possible. The congressman smiles upon hearing Hemmo call him father. The surprisingly daring father immediately goes to a certain high school and asks them to enroll Hemmo. The principal proudly claims that the school is preparing for the handicapped in the first place. They are clearly buttering up the congressman. They also promise to keep it a secret that the congressman is Hungo's father. As the principal and vice principal tour the congressman, Jumsu notices them. Jumsu later discovers that Kyungno is assigned to his class. Hyungno brightly greets everyone. Jumsu did recall overhearing his mother's friends talking about the congressman making moves by transferring his son to the school. Hyungno is obviously ignored on his first day. He then looks at Jumsu who later approaches him. Jumsu offers to help him as the class president. He hopes that they will get along. Jumsu gets called by another classmate, and Kyungho is glad to make friends with someone. Gu Hyung wakes up and goes out to meet Gang Se and the others. Gu Hyung starts sharing that a cripple transferred to his class. However, Gang Se is not interested. Later, they discover Kyungho pushing his wheelchair in the hallway. Gu Hyung points out that he is a cripple. Hyungho gets flustered and falls silent as Gu Hyung starts interrogating him. Jun Su appears and tells Hyungho to ignore Gu Hyung. Gu Hyung trembles in embarrassment and gets mad at Jun Su. He continues cursing the class president out and Gang Se can only ignore Jun Su at first. After classes, Jun Su wonders if Hyungho needs help but Hyungho claims that he has a driver to fetch him later. Hyungho is glad that someone is kind to talk to. The exam season soon comes and everyone has mixed feelings about the aftermath. Jumsu goes to the faculty and discovers the scores from his class. The homeroom teacher can't believe Kyungho became the top student as soon as he transferred in. Everyone applauds him except for one person. Jumsu starts studying harder in his room that night. He overhears his mother's friends feeling bad for Jumsu not getting first place. Jumsu only got second this time, and his mother's friend can only smirk. Jumsu frustratingly scribbles on his notebooks. He violently scribbled circles until his mechanical pen ran out of lead. The woman then starts talking about how the congressman's blood is full of elites. However, they then mention that Kyungho is adopted. They continue gossiping about the congressman's family with no filter. Hearing that, Jim Su can only laugh. The next day, he meets Gang Se and his friends. Jim Su asks the boys if they want to have some fun. The group then starts bullying Kyungho. Kyungho can only cry and be silent about it to his parents. Things change as soon as someone asks if Kyungho needs some help. It was Nam Su who was reaching out his hands with a smile. Back to the present, Kyungho's classmates are frustrated with his university and course choice. They call him crazy and ask for his good grades. During dinner with his parents, he informs them that he turned in his application. His mother gets flustered and tells him that there is a better choice. However, Kyungho has decided. His mother tries to ask for the congressman's help, but the doting father sides with Kyungho. He tells Hyungho to do his best and ask for help anytime. Hyungho sweetly smiles at his parents. On the other hand, a doctor is getting stressed out with his patient. He asks Nam Su to focus. Nam Su agrees, but he wants the doctor to hurry up. The doctor shows a picture, but Nam Su is unfocused. He still looks at it and mentions that it is a person. However, he can only see it as a person in a wheelchair. The doctor is obviously running out of patience. He tries to calm down and points out that the drawing looks like a butterfly. Namsu disagrees and the doctor frustratingly tells him to focus again. Namsu sees the time and leaves as he realizes that he is late. The assistant consoles the doctor. Namsu carefully walks through the hallway and meets Hungo in a room. They talked about Namsu's counseling session. They also talked about their meals and such. Hungo shared that he sent his application to the university of his choice. Namsu congratulates him, but Hungo claims that Namsu also got good grades compared to him. Hyungho asks Namsu to follow him, and the latter agrees. Namsu also wants to get out of the hospital in the first place. Hyungho tells Namsu to hang in there a little bit more. Namsu complies, but he wants Hyungho to do something about the weird doctor who asks him the same question every day. Hyungho can only laugh and wonder what made Namsu frustrated. They continue chatting until the skies start turning dark. Hyungho feels bad, but he says goodbye. He suggests Namsu take a haircut soon. The two then go their separate ways. Namsu then says his goodbyes to Sung Man and forgets about the big brother term. He tells his big brother goodbye again. Hyungho smiles back and tells Namsu that he will be back soon. 
He tells Nansu thanks one more time. Nansu returns to his room alone and lies down on his bed. He smiles as he looks at the teddy bear that looks like his brother. He hugs it as he falls asleep. 